The Elgato Stream Deck and Stream Deck Plus are amazing devices whenever it comes to productivity, for work, for live streaming, for content creation, whatever you're doing, they are awesome. And today I'm gonna help make it just a little bit better with five awesome plugins for your Elgato Stream Deck. And big thanks to Elgato for sponsoring this video. Now let's go ahead and roll that intro and get into all the really cool stuff that you're able to do with this device and these awesome plugins. What's going on guys? Chad here from How To Tech, the channel dedicated to helping you take your tech to the next level. And today we're gonna to be talking about five awesome plugins to help take your Elgato Stream Deck to the next level. No matter what you're gonna be doing on your Stream Deck, some of these are going to come in handy for you. And it doesn't matter if you're using the Stream Deck, the Stream Deck Plus, or if you're using the Mini or the XL. I just wanted to let you know that these plugins work with all of these flavors. So feel free to go ahead and check some of these out. Without further ado, let's jump over to the computer and take a look at our first plugin. Before we go ahead and get started, I do wanna mention for those of you that don't know how to use an Elgato Stream Deck or might be new to this, how to install a plugin. It's very simple. All you're gonna do is launch the Elgato Stream Deck software, and then we're gonna look for this icon right here and click this and go down to the plugins tab. And then you should be able to search for all the plugins I talk about in today's video. And if you want to use the timestamps below to jump around to the different plugins and check those out as well. So getting started first, we're gonna be taking a look at the Microsoft Teams plugin. And this one is absolutely awesome. If you use Microsoft Teams, you are going to love this and want this on your Stream Deck immediately. So we're gonna go ahead and add the Microsoft Teams plugin just through here. And then it's as simple as dragging and dropping stuff in here. So I'm gonna delete this blur and then show you how easy it is to just drag and drop a plugin inside of there. And then now I'm going to pull up Microsoft Teams and we're gonna kind of go through the process of clicking on some of these hotkeys and showing you how cool they actually are. Starting first with this first one on the top left, yes, this is the blur. So we can actually click that and add a background blur. So if you have a very messy room or something or you just want a more, I guess maybe a professional like kind of feel to like a DSLR where you've got a blurry background, you can get that feel with this button and you can toggle it on and off. We can also, if we need to get up and for some reason, maybe we're not wearing pants at work during a uh, business call when we're working from home, we could turn off that camera and um, go put some pants on <laughs> or go get a snack and come back and turn that right back on. We also have the ability to mute our microphone. And if you pay close attention to that, you can actually see that it shows that it's muted on the Stream Deck as well with that icon updating and even shows up up here that our microphone is now muted. And if we unmute it, it actually shows up here on the Stream Deck. We can click mute or unmute on the computer and it will still update on the Stream Deck as well, which is really nice. And having that ability, because the mute function is one that I use all the time whenever I'm using Microsoft Teams, because I don't want you know extra sound to accidentally spill into my meeting, so it's really convenient to have. We also have the ability to raise our hand in a meeting, so if we have something to add to the conversation, we can raise our hand without having to click it here in Microsoft Teams. We can actually just go ahead and press that button on the Stream Deck. And then we can set up emotes as well. So if we're like, hey, that's a good job. I wanna give you a thumbs up, we can do that. And you know, there's other options there as well. And whenever you're ready to leave a meeting and you don't wanna to have to you know, tab out of whatever maybe spreadsheet or something you're working in um, to go in the meeting, you can actually just click this button right here and leave the Teams call. Very nice and it works very, very well. This is a really awesome plugin for those of you that use Microsoft Teams for work, and I think you guys are really going to enjoy that plugin. The second plugin we're gonna be taking a look at today is the Volume Controller, and I absolutely love this one. This is what sold me on the Stream Deck Plus and why I absolutely love it. You can still use this plugin even if you don't have the Stream Deck Plus and the dials down here at the bottom. And actually, let me change the camera so you can see what I'm pointing at. These dials right here, which are really awesome. If you don't have those, you can still use this plugin. I just think this functionality of it is what makes it so, so cool. So we can actually have our different plugins. You can see here in the software that these are grayed out because I actually don't have any of these open right now, but we have the system volume and I can adjust the entire system volume with the touch of a knob and I can actually tap that to mute or I can press the knob into mute and it's super, super neat. Let me show you how easy it is to drag something in. You can just go over here to the dial section and grab manual detection, 
drag this over and then select whatever application that you have open that you want to be able to adjust the volume of. So if I wanted to do Discord or OBS like this, I can simply do that and then adjust the volume with the knob right here. If you don't have a Stream Deck Plus and you still want to be able to use these, you can actually add them in kind of like this. It's very simple. You just go to down here to the key section and click manual or auto detection for those. And it's as simple as just dragging that in. And then you can see whenever I press that, it opens up this menu and I can actually adjust the volumes through these right here. Or if I wanted to, like I said, you can use this on a regular stream deck and they will work just as well. The third plugin we're gonna be taking a look at today is the Windows display settings. In my previous video, I think as one of the bonus tips, I mentioned that I used a macro and set up to do what I call a movie mode, which is where I essentially go ahead and turn off all three of my bottom monitors down here and I just have my TV active so I can watch movies without having a bunch of light spilling in from my other monitors. And it just makes the viewing experience way better. Like I said, I had to use macros for that a while back, but now there is a plugin inside of the Stream Deck's plugin library and you're able to do this a lot easier. So it's as simple as dragging in a project option from the Windows display settings. So it's as simple as doing that. And then as you can see here, we have it configured for movie mode. It's set to PC screen only. And then whenever we have it to the normal version, it extends the display. So it's as simple as changing this to PC screen only. And now this is set up as a like movie mode of where it only features one monitor at a time and kind of disables the other one. And then you can set up the opposite, which is the extend option and it's just as simple as dragging that in and selecting extend, and then your monitors are gonna go back to normal. One thing I do wanna mention is that if you are doing this and you have a NVIDIA graphics card, and I would assume this is probably the same way for AMD graphics cards, let me grab this here. Uh, one thing you'll want to do is whenever you set that up to um, the option for the movie mode of where you've got it set to PC screen only, you will want to open this up and just select the one monitor that you want or the one display that you want to be that quote movie mode. And then that'll work for you. This is a thing people have asked me for a ton since the last video. And this is kind of the easiest way to do it now without setting up a bunch of macros. The fourth plugin we're gonna be taking a look at today is by far one of the best plugins I've started using. It helps me save a ton of time and that is the Color Picker. The Color Picker is a very simple plugin and you can see right here that we have a color value set. But if I was to put my mouse directly over this pink color and press this Stream Deck button right here, you can see it just gave me the exact hex value of what this color is. And what's really neat is if we, like I've already dragged this over here, and you go to select on key press and value to show, we can actually show the color name or the RGB value or the hex value. And then we can also go ahead and copy that to our keyboard. So if we were to go ahead and say, take this specific gray right here and click this button, we can get that color value. And what's really neat is if you're working with a ton of them, you can actually set up a palette of these and you can just go through and grab a bunch of colors all at once. And then if I was to open up, say a uh, notepad and just paste into this thing, you can see it's pasting in that color value. And if I was to do the same on this top one and do that and then hit enter and paste that in, it's pasting in that color value. It is a very basic plugin in that sense. And like I said, you can also do color name as well. So if I wanted to get the color name of that, um, there we go. We can see that is actually crimson. Whenever it comes down to it, it's a very basic and easy plugin, but it is going to save you a ton of time if you do any kind of graphic design. And it's one that I'm fully embracing and going to have on my stream deck probably 95% of the time. The last plugin we're gonna be taking a look at today is IFTTT, and this is a really neat integration in the Elgato Stream Deck because it allows you to start pulling off a ton of automation for say your smart home or for your office, and I absolutely love it. And there are tons of integrations, and we'll talk about those in just a second, but the base premise I wanna show you is that it is simple to where you could literally just say, I want to press a button 
and I want that button to send me a notification on my phone. Yeah, that's that's very basic in nature, but here's this in action. Press that button, give it a second, and there we go. It sent a notification to my phone. I do wanna show you how to kind of set up something similar. You will need an account on IFTTT's website, and then it's as simple as starting with some apps and creating applets. And it's you don't have to be a full-fledged developer to start using this. I figured this out in about five minutes, and there are a bunch of templates on here too that'll be helpful. So what you would do is you get started by adding an app. Um, so we'll go to my applets, and uh, let's click Create. And then we'll set up if this. So one of these is going to be a webhook because we're sending something from the Elgato and it's on a button press. So whenever we receive a web request, so an example here is like button pressed. So I'm gonna do SD1 for the first stream back button that it's set up to, and then we'll do uh, pressed. If I can type and then we'll create a trigger. So you're essentially taking your stream deck and through this plugin, you are now able to use IFTTT as a web plugin to be able to control a bunch of other devices that you might actually have. So then we can select and then do this. So this is where this gets crazy. This is why I'm not gonna talk near as much in detail about this, but if you're interested in smart home stuff and you wanna see me talk about that more in the future, let me know um, because it covers absolutely everything. If you have a smart thermostat, you can change the temperature or turn the heater on or the air conditioning off by a press of a button on your stream deck. You can you know, upload Google Docs, pull information, mess with Google Drive. There are a ton of features that are integrated into this. But for the purpose of this video, um, we're just going to set it up to where it sends me a notification. So we'll click notifications and we can send a rich notification which just has more detail and more like a fancier type of notification, notification with more information. Or we can set another one. And then I could actually just leave this. This shows the event name. But I could put take out the trash. So I could put that on there. That way I know that the trash is like about to overflow and I probably need to take it out, but I'm busy working on something and I want to make sure I take out the trash before my wife gets home. That way she's just not like, why didn't you, why didn't you take out the trash? So we could do something like that and then click create action and then click continue. And then it'll say if blah, 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 then this. Okay. So we've got that taken care of. There are a few things that we want to get from this before we can go ahead and add this in and we'll drag in over an IFTTT thing. And then we've got our master key, which is going to be for our web hooks. And you can actually grab that by going to this, your services, web hooks, and it's here somewhere. I saw it a second ago, settings and then grabbing this link here, just the end of that link. So after the use, that's going to be your ID for that. And you can do that. And then now we need to grab the event name. And however that event name is set up is I believe based off of the webhook. So let me pull that back over here and go to my applets. And then, yeah, so it's SD1 underscore pressed is what we need to add in there, I believe. So we'll do SD1 underscore pressed. And then we'll say, take out trash. <laughs> so now that we've got that set up, here is my cell phone. And we're gonna press the button on the stream deck that says take out trash. And we should get a notification pop up that says, take out the trash. We did it. <laughs> So there we have it, five awesome plugins for the Elgato Stream Deck and the Stream Deck Plus and all, you know, all that other stuff. I feel like we did a good job today. I feel like we covered a wide range of stuff people might be interested in. We got Microsoft Teams for Business. We've got the Color Picker, which is really nice for creatives. We've got the Movie Mode, which is really nice for everyone because who doesn't like watching movies? And we've got IFTTT because yeah, home automation and being lazy is awesome. It's actually probably gonna save you money too by having all those integrations set up. Cut the lights off in your other room from your stream deck. 
pretty cool, right? That's gonna be all for this video. Like, subscribe, do all that other cool stuff, and check out this video here on the first five Stream Deck plugins I showcased on this channel. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.